Linux is a large universe with a lot of distros, derivatives, forks. Currently, more than 300 Linux distributions are actively maintained. But wait a second, only 5.3% of you guys subscribe to my channel, 94.7% of the viewers don't. Please, for the love of God, subscribe to my channel. I have big dreams with my channel. I can only achieve them with the help of you guys. Thank you so much in advance. There are commercially backed distributions such as Fedora from Red Hat, Open Source from Source, and Ubuntu from Canonical Limited, and entirely community driven distributions such as Debian, Slackware, Gentoo, and Arch Linux. But such a number of choice means a large work for developers. Just for an example, the packages are needed to be made for every distro, every release, every architecture. This means, for a single package, you need to make it for Debian, for Ubuntu, for Fedora, for Arch, and more on. Let's talk about Ubuntu alone. You need several packages for all the versions of Ubuntu to currently be supported, and then that multiplied to all the CPU architectures that this operating system supports. That leads to 4500 packages for one application and still many distros are not fully supported. Flatpak solves the problem here. Flatpak is a package management utility that helps you distribute, install and manage softwares without needing to worry about dependencies, runtime or the Linux distribution. Since you can install software without any issues, irrespective of the Linux distribution, Flatpak is called universal package. If you are an experienced Linux user, you can surely figure out the best way to do it. But for beginners or for users who don't want the learning curve to manage packages, these are some issues when using the traditional package formats of DEB or RPM. There is a need to solve dependencies issues. Dependencies refer to the other packages that a program need to depend on for it to work. Now you need to find required libraries to make the software work and then you need to adapt to the new package managers for switching Linux distributions. Not the most secure way for installing or managing softwares. In other words, with traditional package management systems, there are some potential issues that you might encounter in order to make the software work for the system. And not everyone has the time to troubleshoot. Flatback apps run in an isolated environment, often referred to as sandbox. This sandbox contains everything that you need to run a specific program. Basically, the sandbox includes the run times and the bundled libraries to fulfill the requirement of the program to run. Well, you might say that sandboxing is not completely safe and fail-proof in Flatback, but not sandboxing is worse. Since these applications are isolated, it cannot perform any system changes without the permission from you. Also, installation of apps using Flatback does not require you to be a super user, so no alteration takes place to the system files. An example from my life, I installed Chrome and it imported all the bookmarks and search history from Firefox and uninstalled the app. Suddenly, it was wiped completely out of existence on my device. Well, thanks for importing everything, but my passwords, logged in accounts, all were there on Firefox. This did stir a thought that what if some more serious packages are removed from the system and the whole system breaks, an average user will not know how to recover. And the same thing happened with Linus Tech Tips when the desktop environment was removed while installing Steam. Just think, the installation of a simple application removes the entire desktop environment. That's... <laughs> Distros take time to update their packages, so if you're a developer, you might want to create a PPR repository. but. It also has its own disadvantages. All these problems make third-party app developers question why they should create apps for Linux. For Linux, they need to create a ton of packages just to support 2.09% of the market. And this is one of the main problems I faced after switching earlier. I had to search for alternatives and switch my entire workflow from After Effects and Premiere Pro, but then eventually I had to give up. With Flatback to risk, we might even see third-party app developers bringing support for Linux. Then there is Flathub, a centralized Flatback applications repository that offers tons of apps and games for Linux systems. It also provides a building service for developers who want to build, distribute, and provide regular updates to apps. You can also integrate Flathub with your software center from where you browse and install Flatpak applications using a graphical interface or from the terminal if you want to use it. So sandboxing environments for running apps 
support for several Linux distros, running multiple versions of the same app at the same time, no dependency, incompatibilities, automatic application update in the background. But where's the catch? It does not have server support yet. Flatpak is designed to run inside a desktop session and relies on certain session services such as a D-Bus, Session Bus and optionally a Systemd user interface. This makes Flatpak not a good match for a server. However, the build features of Flatpak run fine outside a session, so you can build things on a server. Flatpak apps consume more disk space than you did usually have while using DEB or RPM files and you did need to find ways to free up the disk space eventually. But at the same time, later apps installation weigh the same if they are available in the packages. Just because it runs on an isolated environment, you may miss some functionalities for some programs. For instance, Flatpak apps may not support your custom GTK theme but they also have a documentation from where you can do it. I will put the link down in the description. Many distributions have also started shipping Flatpak with their distros. Well, if you don't have Flatpak, then you can install it easily from their site. They have this simple icon layout. From there, you can select your distro and then just go over there and install it. While it is true that Flatpak does not solve all the problems for packaging in Linux, but it solves problem for 33 distributions. That means Flatpak alone can serve 33 Linux distros. And the complete list is there in the website, as you can see here. As of now, they are supporting 33 distros, and I'm sure that this number will increase in the near future. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching till now, then please do consider liking, subscribing and sharing the video to your friends, family or anyone that will be very helpful for the channel. And what are your views about Flatpak? You can comment them down below. And what do you think about the animations and all that I have made? Also do comment about that. Thank you so much for watching. And I make this video only for you guys. So if you guys comment and tell me and give me some suggestions for on what videos I will make in the future, then I'll be very much grateful to you guys. Thank you so much again. I'll catch you in the next one.